Have you heard? Brownstone has regrouped and is now back on the mic, peeps. The group consists of Nikki, Aaron Jackson, and Alexis Jones. Their first venture in September 2022, they released a new song. And in 2023, they released Ain't No Mountain High Enough from their upcoming live covers album. The group on the onset was signed by Michael Jackson. What a backing, huh? And the group's original members were Nikki Gilbert, Maxie Maxwell, and Monica Mimi Doby. Oh, hey, peeps, it's your girl, Paprika, and you're watching Pass the Mic with PST. You know, this group should have been one of the hottest groups on the scene, but it just didn't get the material they needed to break through. Also, as with differing female personalities, two of the members didn't see eye to eye, namely Nikki and Monica, which resulted in Monica leaving the group. The group only released two albums with If You Love Me being the only hit single from the fruits of their labor. If you don't find the right song, no matter how talented, your success may never take off or may even be short-lived. And allegedly, as with many of the groups from the 90s, they didn't receive all of the coins they pulled in. Back then, it was all about wanting to be famous, but they didn't realize the amount of revenue they were generating, but not pocketing, or even recognizing not to just give away the rights to songs you've written under the guise of signing a contract. Sadly, the deals back then were all about allegedly benefiting the labels and not the artists. And those kids were all so young and it was all so new. You live and learn, but learn from examples and not from experience if you catch my meaning. Nikki Gilbert was the originator and lead vocalist of the group Brownstone. In her interview with Pierre of the Panic Room, she tells how the group Brownstone was formed. The story makes me feel some type of way because as she was auditioning around town and she was, in her words, very heavy weight-wise, so the general response she got was, cute face, great voice, but you don't fit the look. Why should that matter, people? I won't go down that road, but just saying, we've got to do better, people. We've just got to. So Nikki's solution was that she was going to surround herself with a group. We're going to make this about music and harmony, and it's not going to be about me looking like everybody else, she said. Her mother was her biggest inspiration, and the way she spoke about her mother was so sweet and endearing. She said her mother's taste in jazz was impeccable, and it was her mother who taught her how to use her tool. Watching her mother overcome obstacles and struggles is what made Nikki strong in her aspirations. And you know what's so cool about Nikki? She said it was not just about making it herself, but it was always about bringing others along with her. To be commendable, to be commendable. She also said she resonated with Shaka Khan because like her, Nikki has a big voice and a big sound and it inspired her to just open it up. And that she did with every song she belted out. Let me just say, in my humble opinion, this woman has some pipes. My favorite song of theirs was, If You Love Me. Go check out that video. If you watch her videos, you can see how much she loves singing. And that's why I was so surprised when she went on a five-year hiatus. I was saying to myself, come on, girl, get back in the game. Talent like that should be shared. Then in 2003, she re-entered the arena as a solo singer with the debut album, Grown Folks Music. No wonder Nikki has such powerful voice pipes. 
As I said before, she owes it to her mother, who was herself a jazz singer. You know, jazz singers, they just hit differently. They always give you that, what's it called? Lenya, which means a little bit extra. Fun fact, before she became famous, she used to work at Taco Bell. Now, can you imagine her singing your order to you? <laughs> corny, I know, I know. But hey, what do you want? I'm the queen of corny, and I own it. And like many of her successful contemporaries, she's a triple threat, as she not only sings, but is a songwriter, and she acts. And bump that, not a triple threat, but many, many other things under her belt. And she's also a producer. Nikki, together with Queen Latifah, has a BET series called From the Bottom Up, which she created and executive produced, and it is currently airing. Monica Dolby, affectionately known as Mimi, was part of the original trio. However, she rarely had solos on their songs, but appeared only to be more of a backup singer to Nikki and Maxie. You know, I'm not sure why that was the case because Monica's vocals on Grapevine was solid. I certainly would have been right there in support had she decided to do a solo album. After departing from the group, I don't believe she continued in the industry. I think I've read somewhere once that she may be a teacher. If so, what a commendable profession. To tell you the truth, it's one I would not readily seek out as the world is just too mixed up today. I mean, what kind of madness do we live in where a six-year-old, you heard me, a six-year-old not only is in possession of a gun, but shoots the teacher with it? <laughs> but I digress. It appears that whatever small beef there was between Monica and the group resolved itself because she joined the group for the reunion in 2015 and was with them on the media circuit to promote the group. The group no longer looked the same, but the one constant was Nikki Gilbert. Maxine M Maxwell, the other original member of the group, is sadly no longer with us. Back in 2015, she died from a freak accident in her home. She was only 46 years old. She is survived by her husband, Karsten Schack, a Danish record producer, and their son. Tina Cosper was brought in when original member Monica Dobie left the group. Kina's stint with the group was short-lived, as the group only released two albums before disbanding. Man, I still can't get over that. Only two albums? Kina went the solo route and released a self-titled album, which cut three songs. Erin Jackson and Alexis Jones are sisters who also joined the group Brownstone after a rebanding and they're the current group. The sisters have success in their own right as they are part of the 26 musicians known as One Tribe Collective and are reportedly up for a Grammy. Aisha Brown joined the Brownstone group in 2008 with Maxie and Nikki as the trio. She hasn't been featured on a lot, but she is a returning member. Well, as I stated early in the video, the 90s music just hit differently. We had a nice selection of girl groups to listen to. And let's not forget the solo fem female artists of that time, such as Aaliyah. You know, she was one of my favorites. In interviews, she just seemed so down to earth and real. She was making real strides with her music and her acting career was taking off. It was so heartbreaking to learn of the plane crash that abruptly ended her young life right as she found true love. Yes, the music was on point and the videos actually told the story of the song in the 90s. Those girls did their thing. 
For the most part, everyone in the group could belt out a song which showcased just how talented they all were. They all were intent on doing their own thing, not just copying someone else. Instead of being vindictive and competitive, they seemed to be supportive of one another, just hoping that they all get a piece of the pie. The 90s gave us TLC featuring t Boz, Chili, and Left Eye, a really cute group spitting out hit after hit, such as No Scrubs, Creep, and Waterfalls. Then we have In Vogue with Cindy, Dawn, Maxine, and Terry belting out Hold On, Free Your Mind, and Don't Let Go. Also, SWV, Taj, Coco, and Lily truly were sisters with voices. Remember the song Week and Jade, consisting of Joy, Di, and Tanya belting out the hit, I Wanna Love You. And those are just a few. Man, they just don't create music like that anymore. That is why we all get so fired up when they make a comeback and start touring and producing music again, because they will forever have a special place in our hearts. Someone needs to put on a TV special featuring all of the girl bands of the 90s and have each of them belt out three of their biggest hits. Now that's a show I can get on board with. Anyone listening out there? Hey, Nikki Gilbert. If anyone could pull that off, it would be you. Let's go, y'all. Well, that's it for us, peeps. Hope you enjoyed another nostalgic trip down memory lane. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video, so please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on your post notifications so you're notified when we upload videos. Until next time, thanks for watching. It's Paprika signing out.